when slaves were brought to america from africa and the caribbean their owners forbade much of their home culture including music as a result slaves were forced to reinvent their music within the confines of their bondage their life in slavery shaped the music and the way it was used in everyday life their music was more than just a sound and a form of entertainment it was a tool for work a symbol of hope a means of expression and an affirmation of their humanity most importantly the slaves music was a road to freedom in Africa, the people practiced a form of storytelling through sounds and instruments. Griots, African storytellers, were found in African villages, and they brought to life stories of African heritage and preserved the traditions of their people. They sang and or played the kora, which is a string instrument. From this beginning came tribal trances in Tanzania, field hollers and work songs from Mali, and other musical instruments like the kalimba, which is a thumb piano, the gem, a famous African drum, and the akonting, which is the original banjo. Before the 1400s, slavery existed in Northern Europe and even in parts of Africa. African slaves had been traded throughout Europe and even down into the Caribbean and to Central America. In 1510, King Ferdinand of Spain authorized the shipment of African slaves to the New World, and from that point, thousands of slaves were sent each year. By 1860, four million slaves had been brought to America, and African Americans were the only humans legal to be enslaved. When African people were taken from their homes, they were stripped of everything. Before they were forced on the boat for their journey to the New World, Africans threw down their hearts. Essentially, they had no choice but to leave behind their traditions and way of life, including their music. Once they arrived, they were very confined and had no freedom. They were trapped in their servitude and bondage. They needed a way to relieve the stress and pain, a way to express themselves and keep their roots, traditions, and African heritage alive. They needed a way to find that freedom again and to reaffirm their humanity. In most cases, no forms of any musical instruments were available to them. They were able to use their voices for instruments and hand clapping and feet stopping for rhythms. From this, they sang their work songs when chopping wood or building railroads. They also voiced call and responses or field hollers when working on the sugar plantains and in the cotton fields. In these slave songs, you can hear the despair in the tone of the music, and the words usually describe their work and the fear or harsh conditions they face. Despite the direct meaning of the words or tonal quality, the purpose of these songs was to uplift and encourage each other when they were working. These songs helped keep them alive and going during their suffrage. On some plantations, slaves were able to recreate some of the instruments that originated in Africa, like the banjo, a string instrument, the mouth bow, another string instrument where the mouth was used as the resonator, the quills, similar to a pan flute, the wash tub bass, and jugs. They created all of these instruments from materials that were found and they were allowed to use. In the next clip, we have recreated instruments and a music that would be similar to the slave songs. slaves had come from Africa, the Caribbean, and other parts of the world, slave music in America was a diaspora. Their new music was rooted mainly in African traditions, but influence of the islands and northern European music are assimilated into the songs to create a new and different sound in the slave songs. When the Africans came to America, they were not only forced into working for the white man, but also forced into the white man's culture, religion, and were incarcerated into an entirely new way of life. The slave owners made the Africans study Christianity, and the churches carefully tailored the Bible's messages to justify slavery. For example, Exodus 21.20 states, When a man strikes his female or male slave with a rod so hard that the slave dies under his hand, he shall be punished. If, however, the slave survives a day or two, he is not to be punished, since the slave is his own property. Or, Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. Peter 2.18 Other references in the Bible include, but are not limited to, Colossians 3.22, Luke 12.47, Ephesians 6.5, Timothy 6.1, and Leviticus 25.44.
The African slaves took the Bible messages and turned them into spirituals. These songs were biblical words, but with different meanings in African music. The songs portrayed a vision of escape and hope for a better life or for redemption in the life beyond. The songs of deep spirit and sorrows portrayed a light of joy and a message that eventually deliverance from all that hinders and oppresses their soul will come in every man. Will be free. The first known large collection of spirituals published in the United States was from 1867 two years after the Civil War. The collection was 136 songs compiled by white abolitionists William Allen, Charles Ware, and Lucy Garrison, whose purpose was to preserve and document the cultural voice of Africans. The abolitionists gained access to the spirituals by listening to freed slaves in the North. They also were able to transcribe the songs of the slaves in areas that were recently conquered and inhabited by northern troops there to teach newly freed slaves to adapt to life outside of bondage. The publication was very important because in many parts of the United States, the only exposure and knowledge whites had of the slaves was delivered through minstrelsy, where white performers in blackface were determined to present the Africans as happy. <clears throat> through these performances, minstrelsy not only misconstrued slaves, but also dehumanized and degraded them. The mass publications of music from actual slave life provided the misinformed public of what the slaves were truly feeling. The story of slave music began in work songs, with the call and response and field hollers incorporating their African musical traditions, styles, and rhythms, and reinventions of the instruments of their homeland. The music evolved into spirituals with the influence of the southern white man's religion. Their life in slavery shaped the music and the way it was used in everyday life. Extending beyond a form of entertainment, as we often view music today, it was a tool for survival, a song of hope, a means of expression, and an affirmation of their humanity. Most importantly, the slave's music was a road to freedom. Eventually, this music led to the blues, gospel, jazz, and the protest songs of the 1960s. To most, jazz is just a type of music characterized by improvisation, syncopation, and a forceful rhythm. But to the African slaves, jazz is freedom and liberation.